let's let's do some some awards. I'm not gonna start with Coach of the Year though. I want to start with uh, an interesting one, Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. Mm. This one is the hot debate coming Yo, up, man. First of all, it's mad funny how Donovan Mitchell's wearing those like hoodies. But like that hoodie spoke to what Ben Simmons is. But like that definition of a rookie is what Ben Simmons like. Ben Simmons fulfilled that definition. I just thought it was funny. I'm just saying, like it, whatever. Does like, he? it was funny? But yeah, why not? I don't know. Where was this conversation when Blake Griffin was a rookie? I think the conversation was there. I don't think so. This is a conversation we would have had. This same conversation when you're talking about Hideki Matsui becoming being uh, the rookie of the year in baseball. That same one that you that you brought yeah, up again. That's totally different. That guy's like 28 years old coming over here I, with but, professional experience. Like Ben Simmons didn't have any professional experience. What do you think about Mitchell's thing where he said, "Imagine you had a year to study for a test." Before taking the test, and someone else didn't have any time to study, they just went right into the test. Who has the advantage? I mean, I mean, the Simmons, rules are the rules. At the, at the end of the day, the rules are the rules. We could debate right. the rules all we want. Right. <clears throat> Simmons f- fulfills the rookie. Yeah, but was, I think. What? Go ahead. I was gonna say Simmons having a year of NBA training and learning right, but, the playbook. But realistically, how much was he training? He was injured. Yeah, not for the he whole year. Though. Though. He was, uh, not for the whole year, but February he was, he was able to. Who start knows if he was one hundred percent? But it still isn't an advantage to just be and the, the training the building, too. I'm and, sure yeah. he was still training the with coaching. NBA facilities. Okay, so you're gonna slide you meet him? your teammates. You meet your teammates. No, you we're, just, we're, we're not them. saying. We're just saying like. I'm just saying there is there's an advantage. advantage. There, are there, are advantage. Just, there is. Yeah, but I don't agree with that. Obviously, there's advantages. It's injured privilege. Yes, but he also lost the year of not playing basketball competitively. That's true. Listen, like, there's also that, disadvantages of him sitting out. I mean, I'm arguing with you, but that being said, Ben Simmons is the rookie of the year, in my opinion. He averaged 16, 8, and 8 on the year. Uh, averages does, ju- averaged just under two steals and one block per game this year. He led all rookies in total rebounds, assists, steals. He was third in blocks, second in points. And I think the thing that really put me with uh, Ben Simmons over Donovan Mitchell was the field goal percentage. Ben Simmons shot 55% from the field. Now, I know Donovan Mitchell's shooting harder shots. I well, get that. He's also shooting more because his team asks him to, to shoot more. Very true. But efficiency plays a major role with me, and you'll see that coming up. That's going to be a theme that's going to rear its head a lot uh, during this. But, yeah, for me, Ben Simmons, because of the efficiency, because he's been doing it all year, Mitchell kind of had a slower start to the season and then kind of picked up the pace uh, at the end. I think that Ben Simmons is my guy because of that consistency and because he just does more things all around, not only on the offensive side, but on the defensive end as well. Uh, Simmons shoots a high percentage because he can't shoot. Yeah. So a lot of his points are at the rim. He's also bigger than everyone trying to guard him. Yeah. So, he's getting- so th- this is a dude who's 6'8", 6'10", and he's just bodying all these guards. And a lot of guards were hurt in the East this year. You know, Kyrie got banged up towards the end. I think he missed about like 15 games too. John Wall was out. So he was shooting a high percentage because he wasn't shooting. I just you know, just wanted to point that out there. But look, uh, Simmons was impressive. Uh, did you have Simmons also as your MVP? Yeah, I think. I mean, granted, he uh, does MVP. Sorry, rookie of the year. Yeah, rookie of the year. He has obviously the better talent around him. I think Philly's roster is more talented. Thus, like the assist numbers, like giving him handing off to Joel Embiid, who shoots really well. Uh, you know, easy kickouts. They, Rocco is a beast around the rim. So I mean, they have a ton of talent. I think more talent than. Uh, what Utah Utah has, has out there, and Utah I think it's out. I think it's more impressive that Utah got in the playoffs pretty much off Donovan Mitchell's play, but I think just all year round, I think Ben Simmons was the better player for me, and I'm just giving him the Rookie of the Year nod. Fifth most wins uh, by any rookie in NBA history who was leading his team in scoring, Donovan Mitchell. In December, they were 17 and 28, and then they won 11 games right before the All Star break. Uh, this was a team that was a lottery team. Had no Gobert. Gobert in games in which he missed, they were eleven and fifteen without him. And having having Donovan Mitchell just become the the entire offense, the entire team, most forty point games as a rookie. Um, one argument that I, I think you you had a boss saying how Philly's loaded compared to what Utah is. And you can argue that if Simmons was off the Sixers, that would only mean that they put more on Embiid's plate. If Mitchell was off the Jazz, who's going to score for them, right? Little Spanish butterfly, Ricky Rubio. I don't think. But so. you got to give Gobert credit for hit. Like when they came back, they took off too. Like they took off. That's not a coincidence. No, of course, but they took off defensively. He right. he didn't really help them offensively. Right. 
which he had to do everything for them offensively. But that still has an impact. Oh, of course, yeah. Wins, loss. It, it, if you don't need to score 120 points a yeah. night and you could get away with scoring 100 to win. I'm not yeah. like trying to slight Mitch Williams, but I'm just saying like Rudy Gobert is a big piece of that team as well. I just think uh, rookie record for three-pointers in a season two. Um, he shoots a lot more. That's why his percentage isn't as high. I mean, that's just that just comes with the territory. Yeah. You know? He's also shooting further away from the basket. Yeah, like a, a lot more threes. And I just think think about the guards that he got to go up against in, in the West, man. That's true. That That's that's something that really sh- like shook me when I was making this decision is a lot the competition of, factor. A lot of elite guards, though. Look, you play them. You that play doesn't them. sway my opinion when it's NBA basketball. I'm sorry. I, I think you should you should consider it a little bit when you have to play these teams four times as opposed to playing them just twice. I'm not considering that. I think NBA talent is NBA talent. No, of I, course. I'm but, not, not going to say, but, oh, just because you're playing, you're not playing the guards of the West. But if on I'm Monday, gonna, if on Monday I got to guard Russ, and then Wednesday I got to guard Dame, I and then tough. Thursday I got Curry, yeah, you're getting a lot more of that in the West than you are in the East. I know. I say it was tough love. Like, whatever. East, you got East, you got Jared Jack one night, and then you got I guard Jared Jack. you got Terry Rozier <laughs> the next okay. night. You nah. know, so Terry Rozier is on the come up by nah the way. he is on the come up gonna be a free agent next year too so I probably but, uh, saw it after free agent I'm going I'm going with uh, Donovan Mitchell and also I th- I think that having a year of experience in an NBA system and locker room is, is completely different so I'm rolling with uh, Donovan Mitchell alright let's uh, go to defensive player of the year uh, I'll pick it up cause I got another jazz player winning it and I got Rudy Gobert uh, I, I mentioned how they were 11 and 15 without him uh, Rudy Gobert is a uh, 104.3 points allowed per 100 possessions when he was on the court. When he was off the court, uh, 97.8 points when he's on the court. Hot so, damn! There's a guy that was a defensive beast, and he's just so he's mad big and long. <laughs> and uh, he no just changes. Balls, he he yeah. He just he just changes their entire entire defense. And I mean the fact that your entire team becomes a better defensive team and unit when you're on the court. I think that says all you need to know about this award. Yeah, I have Gobert too. I feel like I always have Gobert. You know, every time it's it's in the conversation award comes up. But um, yeah, pretty much everything Nick, Nick touched on. I think. He's a force around the basket, so it's it's even tougher to get basket and grab board. So there's no second chances really when Go Bears around, and yeah, he just cuts you know points in the paint down by so much. It's like an eight point swing, as Nick just said. So he's a big reason, along with Donovan Mitchell, like I also just said that that the Jazz took off. There's no coincidence that when he came back, the winning streak continued. Yes, they won 11 in a row before the before the All Star break. It was yeah, yeah, but they continued playing. Solid basketball throughout to the finish to the finish line, and big part of that was Rudy Gobert. I I gotta agree with both of you guys. Rudy Gobert is my pick for Defensive Player of the Year. Uh, on, I you guys gave all the stats. Another stat that I saw is Utah ranks towards the bottom half of the league in points against on fast breaks and on on off turnovers and on transition, but they rank second in total defense when they are in the half court set. So it shows you how much of a difference it is when he has time to get in the paint and stand there, how much of a difference maker he is for every in every way. Uh, sh- a lot of people talk about Anthony Davis for defensive player of the year. Uh, shout out to Paul George. I think mm-hmm. Paul George is one of the more underrated defenders in the league. Uh, probably one of the best. What, with Kawhi out, probably the second best two-way player in the year. Uh, two-way, two-way players, excuse me, in the NBA. Uh, this year, he, he was tied for first in deflections per game. He was tied for second in total steals and tied for third and this is one of the more underrated stats that you could that you could find in total loose balls recovered. He recovered 139 of loose balls. That's major. That's 139 extra possessions. Mm-hmm. And the Thunder led the league in steals by far this season because of George and Westbrook and their sticky hands. So. And without their best defensive player because he got hurt earlier this year, Andre G. League Roberson. <laughs> and look what look what happened. <clears throat> that really affected them real hard, right? <laughs> They'd be better with him. Uh, man. Yeah, I will say too. MB too should be definitely thrown in there. He was in the in the he was in consideration last year in the limited minutes he saw. He played like half a season. They were talking about MVP and possible depoy, and this year he really got a chance to you know be out there and put it all together. So he had another solid year on defense. If uh, if Embiid or Rudy Gobert win this award, it'll be the fewest games a defensive player has ever played and won this award, and they're the two favorites according to Vegas. So it's going to be other them two, and then. Uh, uh, Anthony Davis that Tim mentioned too. 
All right, now let's get the another interesting one. Coach of the year. I'm gonna go with Brad Stevens, man. Listen, when you take a team not only who loses their second best player on the open on opening day, they also lose their best player. Nick went through the the role players that they lost, but let's not also forget this. His job was hard when everyone was healthy. This is a team that was the number one seed in the NBA last year. I'm sorry, in the in the Eastern Conference last year. And they brought back only five players from last year's roster. He had to go through a complete roster turnaround, including a new main player in Kyrie Irving. That's already a hard enough job. And the fact that he had to now combat these injuries and the team still had over 50 wins and still finished the second best record in the East is absolutely remarkable. I think a guy that can get the best out of his players like that um, deserves the coach of the year every year. Uh, I think Brad Stevens right now is the best coach in the NBA. But with that being said, like I said before, there's so many guys who could get this award. And I think like the rookie of the year, like I wouldn't be mad if there was co-rookie of the year this year where Donovan Mitchell and Ben Simmons both took on like half an award. Yo, give t- call Brogdon and be like, yo, man, dope. But give that last <laughs> year's rookie of the year to Ben Simmons. And then we give Mitchell this year's. We're chilling. Damn I it. like that idea better than Co. I hate right? Co. I hate Co. Awards. I yeah. think everyone would like that idea except Malcolm Brogdon. Brogdon. Yeah, Brogdon. and like Bucks fans. Yeah, <laughs> the twenty-seven of them that are out there. Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. I should say I'm down with the Bucks because you know you are honest, down with the Bucks. The Greek. Uh, I'm gonna go with. I actually had uh, I had Brad Stevens too, but I also put together something for Quinn Snyder for the Jazz. Uh, the fact that he was able to manage that rotation without Rudy Gobert gave the keys to a rookie. Also, got rid of two players that he was banking on this year in uh, Rodney Hood and Joe Johnson midway through the season. And in a tough, tough Western Conference, they made the playoffs. And also, is a team that lost their best player from last year's team, and they still made the playoffs. A lot of people were a little hesitant on them this year. Uh, and just the rotations, man. Just being able to work in... Uh, Ricky Rubio, Joe Ingles, who has been a huge piece to this team, even from last year's playoffs did going see, into this year. Did you see after he dunked, he wore that shirt, like Dunk Life? Yeah, that was yeah. That funny. <laughs> and then, uh, like, balancing Derek Favors with Rudy Gobert, too, I think has been mm-hmm. big for them. So I, I think that Quinn Snyder, who I'm, I want to say I voted for last year, too. I could be wrong, but I, I think Quinn Snyder, him or Stevens, uh, I'll be happy with. Like Tim said, yo, there's so many of them this year. I got uh, Nate McMillan. The Pacers, I think when you trade your superstar, Paul George, you're not expected to do much, especially like no one knew what Old Depot was going to be like. And maybe you could give some of that props to Nate McMillan for, you know, coaching them up. Miles Turner, uh, DeMontis Sabonis, who also had a, you know, a solid year. He was part of that trade. Born ready, Lance Stevenson. Born ready, Lance. Um, yeah, they, they, I, I remember looking back at, as Nick always does, taking trips to Vegas, looking at their over under start of the year. It was like 31 or 32 and a half. And uh, they had 48 wins this year. So, I mean, he did a phenomenal coaching job. Unfortunately, they got to play the Cavs first round. It's a 4-5. But, um, yeah, I still think that that doesn't take away from the regular season they had. So, I'm going Nate. Nate Dog, RIP Nate Dog. <laughs> uh, and then last one we got is MVP. <clears throat> All right, I'll start this one off. I think that if you've been listening to me for the last two years, you under you know who I'm going with. I'm going with the one, the only, the king. LeBron James. He should win MVP every single year, but this year in particular. And the other guy on the docket is James Harden. He's the favorite, right? Well, a lot of people are saying it's because James Harden scored more. Well, he did score more points per game, but LeBron James scored more points, period, right? So LeBron James put the ball in the basket more than James Harden did. On top of that, he shot the same exact percentage from three that James Harden did. Here's what he did that James Harden didn't do. He was second in the league in total assists. He led the league in total points. He led the league in field goals made. He was 11 in total rebound. He played all 82 games. All 82. Without James Harden, the Rockets were 6-3. and three. Do you know who? Do you know what the record was of the Cavs without LeBron James? We don't know because he played all of them. All right? <laughs> they were 0-0. Zero zero. That is so rare for a guy... In this day and age, and especially a guy who's 30, what, two now? 33? 33, I think. 33 yeah. years old, right? <clears throat> and on top of that, he took a team that was a complete shit show in the beginning of the year, rose them from the depths into something not spectacular but respectable, then orchestrated an entire roster turnover 
and still has that team winning 50 games. They still won 50 games. Now, let's take a look at the starting lineup of the Cavaliers if LeBron James were not to play. George Hill, Kyle Korver, Jeff Green, Larry Nance, Kevin Love. That team would probably win 24 games without LeBron. And I'm being, like, generous. All right, let's take a look at the Rockets. Chris Paul, Eric Gordon, Trevor Ariza, Ryan Anderson, Clint Capella. Now, in the West, it's a hard team to make the playoffs. But in the East, that's a playoff team. All right, so if you're talking about who's more important, not only to the squad, but to the league, I think LeBron James is not only the answer this year, but he's the answer every year, hands down. LeBron James is the MVP. Nick, we're saving you for last. Uh, Nick, Nick be, is like that'd be nice. Yeah, you know the nah. you know the Pokemon move bide. No, where you would just you would just sit there and your power would go up until you win one knockout punch. I feel like Nick is using bide right now. His face is just like, oh yeah, I'm I'm ready for all this. I've been waiting for this for 18 months. <laughs> uh, I'm going Ann Davis, a little uh, off the radar. I like that one, but I just like what he did. Really, uh, he handled the Boogie Cousins in sh- injury in stride. Um, took the Pelicans to the playoffs for the first time since 2015, and. You know, not for nothing, like, the Pelicans really don't get much national love just because they're the market they're in. So I think it's always good to see Anthony Davis, one of the league's best players, or best-kept secret, I like to think, uh, in the playoffs. And, uh, yeah, he had a great year. He averaged, like, 28-11, and 11, so he's a monster on both sides of the ball. And he pretty much did it with Drew Holiday, who played a whole season, which was nice to see. Uh, e. Twizzy was there all the two games, and then, like, Rajon Rondo. And then a bunch of, you know, reserves like Ian Clark and Dante Cunningham. And, you know, there's not really much there behind them. So uh, he, he I think it's it's him in my eyes for the job he did in terms of getting them to where they are. So I'm going Anthony Davis. Yo, he carried them when Boogie went down. I think that's the AD everybody's been waiting for. He was having like 40-point games off the right. It was, it was insane. But I don't know. He's, he's a beast. He's Like I said, I, I personally think he's one of the best-kept secrets to the average NBA fan who don't get to see the Pelicans play a lot. Yeah, so. it's a, well. The issue with him has always been if he's been healthy. That's or not. true too. Health. Yeah, and this year he got to he got to stay healthy. And of course his partner goes down. Yeah, but Lord. I mean we'll see. I, I, it's gonna be fun to see AD in the playoffs. Yeah, I mean I don't know how much time we took up, but guys, it's Russell Westbrook, isn't it? Triple double, right? <laughs> triple double. Is it? Isn't that it? Isn't that the be all end all? He hit it because he got a triple double again last night. Sixty. He got twenty rebounds on nineteen shots, but he don't he don't chase stats. He never does. You know. So uh, I, I think my I mean he openly said he chased stats and like everyone chases stats or could chase stats if they wanted to. He also said like yo if you think it's easy to get twenty rebounds go and fucking try. Nah, and but, I agree with that. But he also said people players chase stats and they can pick up whatever they yeah, want anytime. Yeah. So so my question is how come Russell Westbrook you know last year all I heard was triple double triple double Tim came on the show and he said I'm not gonna read off his stats but I'm gonna read off his stats and he told us about the triple double how come this year it don't matter? I think last year because I mean last year this is why. <laughs> He's taking his sh- he's taking his shirt off. <laughs> this is my MVP. <laughs> Fear the beard shirt. Right. This is why. So look, all you <laughs> NBA people out there, all of you guys on the panel can all sit on one because last year you all told me that James Harden was an MVP because Russell Westbrook got some got some a uh, triple double, right? So he does a triple double again this year. I was rooting for him so hard to get a triple double. Gets a triple double. Now what happens? They win Pretty much the same amount of games as they did last year. His team is also more impressive this year than it was uh, last and, year. And he also scored seven more points a game last year. False bars. That's anyway, not false bars. 13.1 to 25.4. It doesn't matter. The, the triple-double is an arbitrary number, too. Because if I if Joey gets 10, 10, and 10, but Boss gets 32, 17, and 4, who had the more impressive game? Why? Because I could label a triple-double if that's more impressive? No, well, that's it's, bullshit. It's hard it, to get it a depends. It depends. Did you, did you do it on eight of nine shooting? Because... James Harden shot 45 Yo, listen, this year. not for nothing. I don't know how you're trying to discredit this because this has never been done before. So, I, I'm sorry. All right, it's like, never been done before. Double. And he, he just did it again. And how come he's not in the MVP right, discussion? He should be. It, I think three he is, year, in, the, he is three, in the MVP I mean, three years ago, Three years ago, everybody told James Harden, yo, man, it was the stats. Curry got, sorry, three years ago, it was, yo, man, Curry got more wins than you. That's why he won, he won the MVP. He's like, all right, bet. Last year, he has dope-ass numbers and he puts up the wins. Nah, man, triple double. So what did James Harden do this year? I'm gonna get the most wins in the league, and I'm gonna put up monster a monster season. Tw- the 21st most efficient uh, P P E R uh, player efficiency rating of any guard in NBA history. He just posed this year. He's whack on defense. LeBron better defender. That's also false on backdowns in the post. Guards shot 34 percent on James Harden. That's the the third 
Lowest mark of any guard eligible for this. Kevin Love missed a lot of time for, for LeBron. Cool. That's fine. Chris Paul missed mad time, too. The same amount of games, actually. Missed the same amount of games. And the reason why LeBron had to play all these games was because he built that team, by the way, too. That Cavs team. All these shitty contracts that he's, he's given out. And LeBron had to play all these these games to keep the team afloat. James Harden was chilling the whole year because he was putting up monster games so they could coast the last 15 games. So they've been they've been chilling now. I think that it's the most ridiculous thing. Everybody that voted for Russell Westbrook last year MVP, and I should have been validated. I should have been paid. <laughs> and this year, the fact that he is sixth on ESPN's rankings for MVP, basketball reference, he's eighth. And I think the ringer had him at seventh. Like, come on, man. I watched the games all last year. People need to stop just looking at the box scores. I mean, and the way this year, too. The way you're talking about Don Mitchell, how, like, without him, who was scoring the ball last year, saying it would be set for the Thunder. Okay, hold on. Sabonis. Come on. Was a rookie. And all right, seen Oladipo, the floor. though. Oladipo goes from, from 14 points a game playing with him because he wasn't getting any shots, and now he's the most improved player in the league, probably going to make all NBA team. Fair, but he wasn't that with the Magic before that. What either. about Kanter? Kanter was solid was with the good. Knicks. He was good. Yeah, Russell he was Westbrook, good for them too. He to Westbrook shot four hundred more times than DeRozan he had to. did. I don't think he had to. I, I think, think that he had to. For them also, to win. another last thing. Year. Last year, the story was Russell Westbrook because KD up and left. Oh man, what is Russ right, going to do? Right. And that's what the NBA has also. And he become. answered it. With I that. think that's. I think that's a, a valid explanation for of why case. the MVP goes there, though, too. Like, I, yo, Houston's part of the story now because they're the team that has a chance to beat the juggernaut of the. Of the Warriors, like they're, they're the story, and that's why, and that's why Harden, Harden only played seventy games this year. By the way, yeah, but an MVP is not a, a story award. I mean, there's definitely things there, that there, tie there's it. A story it to it. You know why? Because in 2015, when the Warriors won the the finals, do you know what everyone was saying about Iguodala? He shut down LeBron. He shut down <laughs> nah, LeBron. Right? You know what LeBron had? 35, 13, and eight. If there's that's no shutting, down, shutting down, down shutting in the down NBA. Is. So he kept down in the NBA is like single. Digit. It becomes That's a story, not. man. It becomes a story that KD left and he had to do this all on. on I think his own. it can't be. It can't be That's discounted. That's part of the reason why. It can't be discounted that last year Russell Wils- Russell Westbrook scored thirty one point six points and this year at twenty five point four. Thirty nine and nine in the West too. Better conference. I'm I'm just saying sixty one team Histori- the Every all the years watching basketball, every historian, it's the 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 award goes to the best player on the best team. It's a top three seed. You need to be a top three seed. That I don't like, but but you're right. But yeah, I'm but, not arguing I mean, that. But, but that's, just, been, that's been for 75 years. That's why I like And then last, last year, he's a six seed, triple-double. I mean, and that's what James Harden does this year. At the he same, gives you the stats and the wins. At the same time, though, like LeBron took that team. That, that LeBron takes that team out of oblivion. So just because he's the fourth seed and not the third seed, you should discount him because of that? Absolutely, because it's a regular ah, season no award. You can't, yo. When you who was better in the regular season than LeBron James? No one. James Harden was this year. I don't think he was. He and he only played seventy games. Because because he was, he, they he was chilled the last fifteen games. Yeah, he yeah, didn't need to play him because he put in the work when he had to. It's not it's not James Harden's fault that LeBron James had his agent, who's his boy Rich Paul or uh, Maverick Carter, be like, "Yo, man, Tristan Thompson, could we give him some money so he can stay with us? Give him nineteen million dollars a year, three rebounds a game he's getting, and bullshit like that." Come on, LeBron. LeBron's at fault for that too. And the That's MVP number is one bullshit. <laughs> the MVP is a regular season award. LeBron James is the best player in the league. No one's disputing that. But the MVP, it is for your regular season accomplishments. And James Harden is the MVP without a doubt. Mm. And he should have been the MVP last year, for back sure. to back. Uh, that I disagree with, but I see him being the MVP. That's fine. Season. You could disagree, but you're wrong. And <laughs> you're my guy. I'm just saying. Well, you're clearly wrong because Russ won it last year. Touche. It's that you, it, I think Nick is more passionate about that than any like ex girlfriend. It is left because that is that, is that is that is the most <laughs> that is the most NBA I watched in my life last year. I watched a shitload and I didn't just read the box scores, which I think a lot of people just read the box score and they just looked at the averages because that wasn't the case. You also were invested, so that's of why course, yeah, I was invested. Yeah, absolutely. Wouldn't you be too? What if I? I mean, if I, I would, yeah, of course I was invested. But also, when you have people I that are experts for two years, for eighteen people months, that are like you people you that are before. experts, NBA experts, and they're saying, "Man, you know what? I shouldn't maybe shouldn't have voted on Russ last year." Are saying it? I feel a little validated. I mean, you can't. That's a terrible thing to say. You can't say, vote one way and then just be like, "Nah, I shouldn't have done that." That's terrible on their part. Um, all right. 
Also, Nick was waiting to get also, that one out. Also, let's not let's not discount the fact all you that, damn trolls with the triple double. You should be ashamed. Let's of not discount too. the fact that that Westbrook though maintained that triple double average throughout the year. This year he was chasing it, chasing it, chasing it, chasing, it, and then finally got it in some garbage games. Like that is a different way to get. Oh, the they weren't double. they weren't garbage games because they needed up until game eighty one to clinch a playoff berth. So he was all right. Fine against garbage yeah. teams. Let's 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 say that instead because they they played some garbage teams in this stretch. So. That was it's a different situation because he's the only NBA guy though, like, he's keeping it he's keeping man, it consistent all year. This year he just got it yesterday. So I think that is a big difference as well. He had it at one point like a couple weeks ago. I don't know. I, th- I think level. I think the reason why he might have got it last year was because it just became it was a spectacle. Oh my.